Howdy! We said previously that a variable is a region in memory containing an array. But what is an array and how do we make one? We'll explore that in this video. Array in general just means a collection of values. In MATLAB, an array will be stored under one variable name. There are three specific types of arrays. The first is a scalar, which is simply a single value. You could also call this a one-by-one -one array. The next type of array is a vector. This is an array with one dimension. In other words, it is a list of values, either in a row or a column. Lastly, we have a matrix. This is an array with more than one dimension. Far and away, the most common matrix has two dimensions, meaning it has rows and columns, or that it looks like a table. You could have three-dimensional matrices, four-dimensional matrices, 28-dimensional matrices, and so on. Array sizes are given as the number of rows by the number of columns. How can you remember which is which? I think of architecture. Columns go up and down. So we can see that variable A has two rows and three columns. This makes it a 2 by 3 matrix. B has only one dimension, so it is a vector. You can say either that B is a 1 by 3 array or a row vector of length 3. C is a 2 by 1 array or a column vector of length 2. Sometimes we want to view an array as a whole, but other times we want to extract individual values from the array. To do this, we use array indexing. Index is just another word for address, location, or slot within an array. We tell MATLAB we are looking at an index by using parentheses after an array name. This is why parentheses are not allowed in a variable name. If working with a 2D matrix, the first index identifies the row, and the second index identifies the column. Let's look at these examples on the right. A parentheses 2 comma 1 tells MATLAB to look at matrix A and extract the value in the second row and first column. This happens to hold a 15. A 1 comma 2 pulls out the value in the first row and second column from A. Here we see that is a 22. With vectors, since they only have one dimension, you only need to provide one index. The third index in B holds a negative 3. Similarly, the first index in C holds a 7. Here's an example just to show you what a three-dimensional matrix might look like. Each of the small cubes represents an individual value. The size of this example is three rows down, five columns across, and seven layers deep. As you can see, it is a bit of a trip trying to visualize these higher dimension matrices. Now try imagining what 4D would look like. How can we declare or store to a variable each of these array types? Scalars are the easiest. You simply need a variable on the left, the assignment operator, and the value you want to store. For vectors or matrices, though, we need to take advantage of concatenation. This is a fancy word that just means slap together or combine multiple things. Brackets are used to perform concatenation. To create this first row vector, we start with the assignment operator like usual. Then, within brackets, we list out all the values we want to combine in order. We can use either spaces or commas between values. Both of these fill in values left to right. For a column vector, things change slightly. Typically, you will use semicolons in between each value. Semicolons tell MATLAB to combine top to bottom. We could also use the transpose operator. Without this little apostrophe, D2 would come out as a row vector. But because of the apostrophe, this gets flipped to be a column. More details on the next slide. Finally, for a 2D matrix, we need to combine the elements for row and column vectors. Start with brackets as usual, then fill in the first row left to right, separated by either commas or spaces. Then, to indicate the jump down to the next row, use a semicolon. Here we see more details on the transpose operation. 
To do this, we use an apostrophe or a single quote. This will turn the first row into the first column, the second row into the second column, and so on. This is a simple example. I declare matrix A with an operator you'll see in the next video. This makes A as a 2 by 3 matrix. Then we transpose A and store it to B. Notice that B is now a 3 by 2 matrix. The size was flipped. And the first row of A became the first column of B.